I've got something a bit different today. You may think this is a bit strange. Dick Smiths don't exist anymore. Well, not in the original sense. I'm just going to have a quick look at this multimeter. Now, I've actually owned this multimeter here for about 20 years. I've had this a long time. This used to be kept in my car, just like this, in a box. And I thought, let's have a look at this thing. It's an old Dick Smith Electronic one, a very basic thing. It's a Q1418. It's got its original leads with it still. And I think it might even have the original battery in it still. <laughs> yeah, let's turn it on. It still works. We'll find out. Oh, there's one of the little rubbers missing. The reason I'm doing a video about this particular little multimeter, this is a cheap little multimeter. At the time, there's actually a special deal at the time when I bought this. They had a two for one deal. So we bought two. And my friend had one, and I had one. And this is just say, this is sat in my car. It's had almost no use. I think I only used it probably three or four times, maybe. But what I want to do is actually power this thing up, actually have a test of it, and put it on my calibrator and see how close this thing is. So a 20 odd multimeter, a budget one. Let's see how good it is. Let's open this up first. Oh, that crack. Oh, maybe I haven't changed the battery in this. That is a pretty solid crack. That's almost like it's never been undone. I'm not sure. I don't actually remember changing the battery in this thing ever. I'm pretty sure that it's still the original one. Maybe there's a date on it. We'll find out. Okay, so how's this come apart? Oh, like that. High watts battery. 0304. That's 19 years. This is the original battery and it still works. No leak. It's not a dual cell, is it? This thing's got it apart. Let's have a look at it. Obviously, I've lost my little rubber feet at some point. There's probably not much to see in here. Get a flux residue around here. It's soldering, manual soldering. 300 milliamp, 250 volt fuse, glass fuse, current shunt. Should we take the board out? Yeah, we should do, eh? Let's take the board out and have a look. I'm just amazed it's still got the original battery in it and it's still working. <laughs> Don't make batteries like that anymore, do they? It certainly isn't a dual cell. <laughs> I'm not quite sure which screws I've got to take out to get this out. Oh, seems like it's free. All right, well, it might just be these posts holding it in now. Let's try pushing them out. Here we go. Look at that beauty. Got a few little bits of broken plastic laying around. It's probably clips when I pulled it apart. It's my guess anyway. Bit of a shame. That's alright. There it is. It's gold plated. The switch is also gold plated. Get your contacts on that. All gold. It's got the good old transistor tester. <laughs> it's got a PTC in there and some resistors. No high current stuff. There's an electrolytic cap in there. <laughs> but it's incredibly basic. What's out there? Is that probably a voltage reference or maybe a voltage regulator? Can you see what that is? C9013. I think it's just transistor, isn't it? Incredibly simple. So we've got a 10 amp current shunt, is a big one, and then we've got a smaller one, which is through this one here, which looks like it's going through this resistor here. Yeah, it does have a current shunt through that one as well, so not much going on there. Anyway, we'll put it back together and we'll test it out. Alright, let's go to the calibrator. Right, so here we are at the calibrator. This is my Datron 4700. This thing does DC volts, AC volts, resistance and currents up to 1.9 amps. So this thing can basically test everything this meter can do apart from transistor testing. We'll start at the slowest range, which is 200 millivolts. Shove this down to 100 microvolts. Turn it on. And you can actually see it. <laughs> All right, one millivolt, perfect. Two millivolts. Oh, it's one count down. Does one count? Not bad. Hundred millivolts. Oh, let's stand by one millivolt here. It's worse at the top end. So one volt is fifteen counts down. Right now, there was an adjustment inside this thing. A little trimmer. Maybe that needs a tweak. I'm going to go through and test it as it is right now. Let's go back down to 100 again, that's one can out there, yeah, okay. So I'm going to test it fully like this first, but maybe I'll give it a tweak and see if it comes right. I'll be able to use the PDVST Mini back on the bench for that. Let's see if it changes anything. So, one volt, yep, yeah, that's right. 
14 counts down. Yeah, marginal. So 20 volts range. It's one count down. So 10 volts. There we go, 13 counts down. Seems consistent. One count down that one. 200 volts. It's 14 counts down again. Seeing a pattern here. This thing is rated, it says, it says don't go over a thousand volts on it. And as you saw, there's only a PTC, there's no mobs or anything on the input protection. There's basically no input protection on this thing. So, just be a little bit careful. So, we did 500 volt range, because that's what it got. It's 500 volts DC. So 100 volts, and it's actually got a warning up here. One count down, as before. So all I'm gonna do is drop this down, say 200. Go to a thousand volt range. That should be 200 volts. Couple of counts down. 300, 400, 500, which is supposed to be the max. Let's go six. Yep, six, seven, eight. It's going to go bang. Can it take a thousand? Nine, 1,000 volts. It's 14 counts down. <laughs> I see a pattern. That's fine. Let's do AC now. So we go in on AC volts, one kilohertz. I'm not quite sure what the frequency response of this actually is. The largest range is like 200 volts. So 10 millivolts, nothing. 100 millivolts, nothing yet. Oh, just flicked a little bit. Yep, you can just see 100 millivolts. That's actually quite good. One volt, a few counts down. 10 volts, seven counts down. And 100 volts. 100 volts is about 23 counts down. Let's change the frequency. Get down 100 hertz, and that's responding much better there. So that's not unsurprising. Usually these things aren't designed for one kilohertz. They're usually meant for like mains frequencies. So that's much better. Let's get down to 50. Much the same. 500 volt range. 100 volts is one count out. Let's change ranges again. I'll put the frequency back up to 100 hertz. Put it in 200 volts, and it's one count out. That's all right. 300, it says 500 max again. We'll see how far we can go. Waiting for like an alarm or something. 800. 900. 1000. And it hasn't gone bang. It survived. That's surprising. Oh no, look, the battery warning is coming up. The battery's finally dying. <laughs> Hopefully it lasts the test. So, resistance mode, 0 ohms, giving 0.4. So, 10 ohms, 10.4 against 0.4 up. 100 ohms, slightly down there. It's a 200 ohm range. Next range up, which is 2k. 100 ohms is good. 1k is down, 7 counts. 1k, bang on. 10k, slightly down. 200k range, 10k, slightly down. 100k, slightly down. There it goes straight to 20 meg. It's no 2 meg, it's strange. It goes to 20 meg, which is a bit interesting. Anyway, 1 meg, pretty close, one count out. 10 meg. Ten meg is 13 counts down. So it's not too bad. I mean it's, all the readings are reading slightly down, so I think there's a little trimmer there which might fix that. I'll try that later on. Now we've got currents to do. So we've got this low range here, which is only for milliamps, 200 milliamps max. So we'll do that there. That's to change the leads over to do the, the higher current. Let's get it down to DC. And this is only DC amps, doesn't do AC amps. Plug that in there. Put it into the lowest range. DC current. Turn the output on. Okay, so we're doing zero microamps, and that's what we're showing. 100 microamps, 9 counts out. That's actually not bad. Not really. 100 microamp on the 2 milliamp range is actually looking pretty good. 1 milliamp, slightly down. Let's do 20 milliamp range. 1 milliamp is looking pretty good. 10 milliamps, slightly down. 200 milliamp range. Bang on. 100 milliamps, slightly down. Now to do a 10 amp range, which means I've got to change my cables. Another Pomona cable set up here. We're doing 100 milliamps. And it shows up beautifully, that's fine. One amp, one count down. Now, as high as I can go on this thing is 1.9 amps. So we'll crank it right to the top, and we're down by a few counts. 
So all the measurements are down slightly. My oh, shit diode mode out. How fast is it? There's no beep. And the battery indicator is flashing up when I'm attaching the probes together. So unfortunately, because there's no beep, I was going to actually use this thing to test the speed in Johnson's continuity tester, which he sent me. So this thing will actually cause a multimeter to beep when it sees a continuity test. So, so if it's actually joining together, it basically it's like touching the probes together. Give you a measurable result. And I was hoping to actually use that on this thing to see how fast this actually is. But you can see from the display itself that I mean it works, but there's no beep, so it's pretty pointless. I'm sure it works fine for doing diode tests. I'd be surprised with any problem. So what I'm going to do now is pull it apart again and try adjusting it and see if I can get the calibration better because I think it, I can adjust it. I think I can do it with that trimmer. Right, I've opened it up. I found a screwdriver which should fit because I'm going through the back of the board and it should just go in there hopefully. I've got Ian Johnson's PDVS2 Mini which is a 10 volt reference or up to 10 volt reference DC. As you can see it's got lots of zeros here. Way overkill for this. <laughs> but we can use this for this test, right? So I can set this to whatever I want. So if I go to, let's do two volts, right? Now I can full scale it. Do two volts, one volt. There's two volts on here, okay? That's how far it is at two volts. Can okay, we're about 14 counts out of one volt. There we go, I'll just confirm that. About the same. So two volts, 19.63. Let's see if we can trim this in. Could be a bit tricky trying to do this, but let's give it a go. That drops in. Now, this may not even work. This may be completely different. Maybe something else completely, but you give it a shot. If I can even get the screwdriver in. Here we go. Right. Ah, oh, there we go. It is indeed trimming. This is going over scale. Bring it back down. Over scale. Here we go. Is that close enough, you reckon? It's over scale. Right, let's drop this thing down. Let's just do 10 millivolts down. Let's do 10 millivolts down. There's 1990. There we go, that is basically there. So that is now perfectly calibrated against this thing. And I bet the 10 volt scale works fine too now. 10 volt says 201, so it's actually slightly up. 3 volts, very slightly up. Don't forget, it also depends a bit on the resistor dividers that are in this thing. So it looks like it's probably a little bit too much for that position. 8 volts, 9 volts, 10 volts is very slightly high now, so now it's actually gone the other way. So maybe what I'll do is I'll drop this one down very slightly here and live with a slightly less accurate low voltage. Let's trim this down a bit before I can get in here again. Oh, it just shifted, just by me sticking a screwdriver in. I must have nudged it a bit. I guess you can see what I'm doing. We'll set this one to exactly 10 volts, how's that? Alright, so 10 volts is now perfect. Let's go back down to 4 volts, that's slightly high. Obviously linearity will, will depend a lot on the resistors and the accuracy of the ADC that's built into it. 1 volt is actually looking pretty good there. 1.5, yeah, I mean it's, it ain't perfect is it? Linearity ADC is not great. But anyway. Let's try a 200 millivolt range. So 100 millivolts, really slightly high. 200 millivolts is probably going to go over scale. 190, yeah, look at that, that's fine. It's good enough. It's not bad for a 20 year old meter, is it? I think it only cost me, I think it was like 25 or $30 for two of them. That's how cheap they were 20 years ago. I'm saying a bit. It's not usual for me to look at a 20 year old multimeter and do a view on it. <laughs> Normally I'm reviewing brand new meters which have been sent to me. I thought I'd be interested to see what an old meter like this actually performs like. I mean this was a cheap meter, it wasn't even a good one really. It's a cheap meter. It's actually okay. For hobbyist use this would have been absolutely fine. And check out other videos down below if you're interested in more stuff like this or actually want to see me testing things like fluke multimeters or kiwits or whatever ones I've tested. I don't know, I've tested a whole bunch of them. There's a playlist down there for that. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed and there's also a Patreon support link over here if you want to help me to buy Bits of test gear and things like that to fix and do videos about. Catch you later.